right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in on another Sunday evening, Talking the Gridiron Off-Season Edition. We gave you guys a bye week last week. We told you off-season is probably going to be at most every other week, and uh, we'll see when it gets to, like, before August, end of July, when nothing is happening whatsoever. We probably might not even do that. But we are here, Jimmy Pilato from the far end of the bench, Darren Breyer from the Fat Boy Fadeaway Sports Podcast, both of the Variety Sports Network. And uh, we are going to move on. We're talking about the AFC East today. We're going to discuss uh, a couple different topics within the world of sports that, that are relevant. I, I feel like even though there's a little bit of a lull of actual action going on, we're kind of right in the middle of all the playoffs. Nothing's really started yet. So we're at a little bit of an impasse. But where we are is, is exciting. But before we get ahead and get into that, be sure to follow at Variety Sports underscore on all social media platforms and uh, at Fat Boy Fadeaway on all social media and at uh, FEOTV Pod as well. Darren, uh, I enjoyed this extra week off. I'm not going to lie to you. I know that during the season we don't have that ability, but having a little bit more time, I get to think about some things a little bit more, and more more is able to happen. But how have you been? How has uh, the, the time been since the last couple of weeks since we've actually got back and done this show? This show? It's good, man. Like, you know, it's funny. Like, I definitely need the refresher because of uh, I still doing that baseball, the basketball one every week. And obviously that. So when the little now during the season, not to have to do it every Sunday, I'm not going to lie. I'm OK with us. Not do, I'm, I'm OK with us doing every other Sunday with that. It gives us a chance to kind of build up some of the storylines as well uh, that we wanted to talk about. But it's good, man. I'm looking forward to talking. To talk. I know Jordan said he had he had uh you had to make a little run to the hospital here. So uh, prayers up to our, our our companion here on Talking the Gridiron as well. Jordan, a little shout out to you there. Hopefully you're doing well there too. So it's been a few weeks of, uh, before we could get him on too. So it'd be nice to get him back on the show here uh, when he can here. But yeah, looking forward to it, man. A- AFC East talk. I know we got some other things we're going to get into. Step into the middle of the ring, maybe. Uh, yeah, so it should be fun. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if we want to talk about that first, uh, uh, that's what we've already discussed. So uh USC 300 BMF title on the line. And uh, from what I hear now, I did not buy the pay-per-view. Did you buy the pay-per-view? I don't know. What, what... I, I'm not like the biggest, I'm going to be, honest. I'm not like the, I watch UFC, but like if it's maybe if somebody's invite me over or something like that, like I did a lot more during the pandemic, no doubt about it. You know, I was desperate for anything on there at the time. And I watched a little bit afterwards. I do like Max Holloway is out of that. My favorite fighter. I didn't watch it last night because I was doing the, uh puppy duty but we had that part of it but (laughs) coming on that yesterday but uh he's a beast the one thing i've always liked about him is that he's just gonna throw throw punches at the end of the day he's a good you know he's obviously a technical fighter too but he at the end of the day he's he has that like fighter in him and so when i saw that last like round that you're able to see the next day (laughs) that was pretty exciting did you end up buying it I did not buy the pay per view because it wasn't a McGregor. I'm I'm going to buy the McGregor and Chandler card that they just announced. Two hundred three uh, is that what it was, or three hundred three, something like that. Right? Uh, it's the I'm pretty sure it's the internet because Connor always fights International Fight Week, which is uh, end of June, beginning of July. So unfortunately, I'll be in Vegas like two weeks before any of that oh. happens. But I'll be out in Vegas for the summer. That's going to be something that I'm looking forward to. <laughs> um, but yeah, Max Holloway gets the very last second KO. Over Justin Gaethje, disappointing. Nico and I like to support the Colorado guys, and Justin Gaethje went to Northern Colorado out here Man, in Greeley, yeah. and I, I think he still trains out here, or he used to. Um, but he he was getting beat on points, anyways. He decided to go out swinging, which is how that belt deserves to be decided back and forth. That should yeah, never be a, a title that goes to the ground. There should be no grappling. We should be standing. We should be banging. That's it. That's all. It should be a glorified kickboxing match. With and when uh, I see the MMA like guys. that, my my you know my but like barely watches it knows the sport would be just be haymaking that where they'd be like yep you waste your energy in eight seconds all right now like let's go to work you know and that's what you do like to see though right like that as a as just like you like to that how do you not beat that type of entertainment? You also get two huge KOs because then the main event Pahara, um, oh, he gets not <laughs> he knocked Jamal Hill. Out, I think Jamal Hill's <laughs> hair landed in the fourth row. Like he knocks his, hey, psh, bro, you knocked his wig off. Oh man, you, have to, you didn't have to hit him that hard, man. You, you didn't have Jeez. to do that. Brutal. That is a a stone cold killer. Um, but I will Ooh. say that for for that matchup, and I think Nico and I, because we didn't get to preview any of it, we were 
uh, going a little bit later this weekend for yeah. our, our show. Uh, yeah. We're going to do a lot of recap. I just feel like uh, that was perfectly set up for him to do that because Jamal Hill is coming off of, of an Achilles injury and hadn't really fully recovered. And Pajara is is that in his prime in the UFC right now. I think that Pajara is beatable as a champion. There's a lot of matchups, and I have to do a little bit more research to get the specifics, but there's matchups that he struggles with because uh, he just he, he has a different style. That kickboxing style is not necessarily built for MMA, but that was a, a uppercut, best uppercut I've seen since Francis Ngannou knocked Clover to share his tooth out. Uh, that's <laughs> And we didn't talk about this before we came on. So, like, I have a question for you kind of on this topic because I didn't watch those fights. It sounds like we both did it. But last time we talked, I did see you made a flight out to Philadelphia. My son has gotten really into wrestling, so I've been kind of following the storyline. You, you want to talk a little bit about WrestleMania? Because well, I do. I do. I don't want to do the whole show. We, we, we want to get people yeah, there. Yeah, no. Well, Nico and I already did an hour, and that was, was too much. For a minute, and, like, there was – Hey, Lance, hey, there was two football players involved in the match. And you saw yeah. Kittle in this, so that, that counts as some NFL talk. I'm just saying, for you, you've been to other sporting events, right? You've been to other games. How was that magnitude of an event, I guess? I don't, I, you're talking to the wrong side of the far end of the bench. Nico was the one. His So that's be sure to listen to uh, episode 178 because it's a full hour-long recap. I it's the coolest thing that we've ever been able to experience and cover on this show where Nico was able to go get a standby ticket, not know he's sitting at the airport in Denver at six o'clock in the morning, not knowing if he's getting a flight to Philadelphia gets on last standby ticket whatsoever on the flight gets there, has a $300 ticket to go to WrestleMania and is able to go to the conventions experiences the night that was How does Sunday. This guy do this? I it it's he's got a lucky rabbit's foot or something. Um, things just happen to work out for him. But he's doing this. He goes and his, the Undertaker is his all time favorite guy. So the Undertaker coming back and saving Cody Rhodes was awesome for him. And then I don't know if you everybody heard, uh, but the last part of the story. So on Monday he's still kind of walking around. That's when he goes to the Rocky statue. He goes to the footprints. He goes and he's wearing his punters or people two sweatshirt because. You know, Nico's not a dumb person. He happens to know that Pat McAfee show is going to be filmed out of Philadelphia. So <laughs> I might as well well walk down. I saw he, that. You met him. Yeah, his producers, his, yeah, his right. producers found right. Nico during the show, and he met Pat McAfee and said that Pat gave him the time of day, was an awesome dude, which I, I wouldn't expect anything less from what I see on camera. But like I said, there's a lucky rabbit's foot. I Unfortunately – I just have to be the handsome side of the Far End of the Bench podcast. I'm not the lucky side. The lucky side <laughs> and the cool side is is Nico. I'll just take the looks, and, and that's yeah. about all I got. Yeah, and that's funny because I thought it was you the whole time with it, but as maybe in wrestling. I wish. In my, wrestling. Here's the thing. My brother and I. Oh, oh Hey, oh, oh, well, what an entrance God. music here in the wrestling. We get it. We get Josh Edwards here. Stone Cold. He's out of the sky. He's out of the <laughs> Undertaker. He joins. Uh, Josh, welcome. Talking to Gridiron. I think it was week 17, epi- our season one, that last time you joined here on the show here. I think if I remember right, I have a pretty decent memory. It was those Lions beating the Packers to end the regular season. That was the last time you on. Uh, glad to have you on, Bad. We do the baseball together. Uh, thanks for jumping on. I wasn't expecting this. Saw your little mug pop up at the bottom there. I said, "All right, we're I, get I, it feels so WWE esque, Josh." Yeah, I, it's I, kind of I, I haven't I seen like, you in a while. It's like a Royal Rumble return. I was like, "What the? <laughs> Where did the music come from?" I'm like, <laughs> I'm flipping my light on and off. Like, oh my god, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? <laughs> well, I was prepping for next left turn because we start, you know, in like 25 minutes, and I was like, the guys are on them. Pull it up on YouTube, and I'm like, oh, they're talking wrestling. I gotta go see what's going on. <laughs> we got another yeah. wrestling nerd. All right. Um, should Stone Cold have come back other than the Undertaker? Undertaker was cool, but would Stone Cold have been cooler? No, th- I don't. I think it would have been better to incorporate both of them. But I love Taker, so I mean, that was kind of my thing. I would have rather had Stone Cold over John Cena. Oh yeah. Nico did Not say that the there. trumpets, the trumpets did have a moment where everybody, all seventy five thousand people, heard the, the initial three horns, and then they were like, "Whoo!" And then you hear the wave of sound just like rush to the. It, it has to be interesting to be a part of the crowd because even the wrestlers yeah. talk about it. Where in a normal arena, 
the sound is kind of like boxed in. So you hear everything and you get the reaction live with the outdoor stadium. The sound is built to go up and out. So right. you don't get a feedback in from the crowd. Really? The noise is going up and out. So it would have been interesting to be a part of that crowd because where Nico was sitting was way kind of far in the back. Let's be, he, he got a standby ticket and he spent $300 on the ticket to get in the door. Uh, the man hustled his way it, it, and he was there, but that was the thing. He, I, I wonder if you could feel like the air gets sucked out of the building when Undertaker's back. Have you, have you guys either been to a run over the wrestling match ever, like been to one before? Oh, okay, yeah. I have. Oh, okay, it, the, in Pepsi Center, in, in the uh, downtown Denver arena, there, there's been a couple of Monday Night Raws, Nico and I have attended. <laughs> Eventually, we'll get to an AFC East breakdown, but let's be real, people. <laughs> Nobody cares about Patriots offseason this much. We're, we're going to get to it right now. We're, uh, this is what – so I, what I was thinking about it was, okay, if you were at the live crowd compared to watching on TV where they can obviously script it with the TV and the video and the movie part oh, of it. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was produced beautifully on TV. Really well. But I'm like, okay, but it'd be weirder. And to me, it'd be kind of odd from the crowd standpoint if, like – if you're seeing the Undertaker cho- uh, you know, choke slam the rock, and then yeah. you're seeing it scatter off to the right. Like I was, I'm wondering how that all goes down. I know they turned the lights off for a period of time, but it like, is it is lost. different. Yeah. So he said that he kind of felt something coming when Cena came back because all of a sudden there were a bunch of cameramen running to the entrance of the ramp. So that was kind of the dead giveaway. Um, but for Undertaker, since it is the lights out, the unfortunate thing is because in our our video, which I have to re-edit because WWE happens to have some nerd that they pay 13 cents an hour to and they scrounge all of YouTube and, and decided to flag our content. So I have to take out some of the TikToks that I used and then put it back up. But in the video that Nico has, the lights do go out. But since it's an outdoor stadium, you can still see kind of the outer crowd, but you still get the effect of it because in the center of it, everything yeah. goes black. You can't see anything in the center. And then he comes back and it's Taker and he's there. The Rock is... I love this version of The Rock. I don't know how you feel, Josh. You probably have a different feeling on him because you saw him more in his prime. I've seen him in like two fairly recent feuds with John Cena, and now Who did you guys start the- watching. That's a good question. I guess like who's your who was your main who was your champion, Jimmy, at your time? Like when you first started? Uh, it was yeah. I was not DJ DX. I was when Cena uh, beat JBL, but I was also a really big Eddie Guerrero fan. So it was a little bit before. Cena getting the title and from pretty much then that point on there's been certain times where it's been more exciting like Nico and I were talking we watched uh the WrestleMania where Seth Rollins cashed in together that was like when we first bought the WWE Network so it was the first WrestleMania I'd ever seen because up until that point I was just watching the recaps on Monday Night Raw because my parents were like I'm not spending I'm not spending $60 on a pay-per-view why would I do that I don't. I just. I want to see what happens, and we got to watch that WrestleMania. So, it's we. I know it's totally ridiculous, and I know that it, it, we. Okay. Yes, they had it in the doc. They were playing they, ball. They, they're getting the ballsy. I don't know if you guys realize they're getting ballsy. In one of those commercials, they have Triple H saying attitude era. Well, they they say have a Triple H saying we basically had this card written since October, so they yeah, basically have said. Like they've they've said that this is not this is no longer actual competition. We know who's going to win, but it is still the most wow. compelling thing that I've seen in the last two weeks. I mean, it's more compelling than UFL football. It was Josh. Who was your champion when you were kind of in your prime there? So I got what? my first taste of wrestling when Hulk Hogan was still wrestling. Before really? He NWO? I had a cousin who was into it, and he had all the action figures and video games, and, and I only got to see it when I was with him. Um, and then, so I kind of got into it with DX and then I went away and I came back when Cena and Orton were in their thing. Ooh, so that would have been like 96. Seamus came back in. So when Seamus was first introduced was when I really jumped in and I walked away again. And when Randy came, Randy Orton came back from this last injury, I was like, all right, I'm going to watch the end of his career. He's a St. Louis dude. He went to the same high school as my mom. Obviously my mom went a few years before he was ever there, but there's still that he's from St. Louis. So I kind of want to see the end of his run. Uh, but my first WrestleMania was the first time Shawn Michaels and Undertaker uh, oh, clashed. Oh, you go way back. It was the, the best match of all time. That one. I, awesome. I think the one, two is good. One two was the better. One was better. One was better. Triple and H one had, Triple one H had H the bigger Undertaker mistake. was almost as good as one. Yes, Triple H and Taker had a really good one, but that, it, 
one had that mistake where Taker almost became paralyzed. Like yeah. landed on his face outside of the ring, and then and gets up and finishes the match. Is the is WrestleMania one with Taker and um, uh, Mankind, or is that a different one? Is that not WrestleMania? Remember, I like the one that was where he throws him off top of the off the top of the cage with Hell in Cell. All right, and um, I only know that because I've watched the doc. You know how A and E has the yeah. WWE docu series. That's Josh, actually we have the same type back of into watching it. <laughs> we have a lot of nerd crossover. We we have a lot of like. We were just because we hate each other with hockey doesn't mean we still can't get along for everything else. Uh, that's yeah, that's true. I was yeah. watching the Stone Cold one the other day when I, I couldn't sleep. It was like three, and I, and even I, I was like, man, with the blog hair, it was hilarious. But I had never seen the promo, and it was his story was interesting for me. He was the guy. So in junior high, what I would have been ninety six to ninety eight, and then I was in high school from ninety eight to two thousand two. So his, so basically his, like I remember, like seventh grade kids, like getting like. Uh, like they would get like sent to the office or referrals for giving like the second side. And like that was like, and that's that was, the yeah, bottom line. <laughs> the second side oh. was just a deal. Like in seventh and eighth grade, that thing was just like, and you gave that. It was. Darren, uh, think of it. Think of it now as a teacher, like think yeah. back to the, the, the some little punk runs uh, up to you and he goes, you know what? You gave me a deal on my assignment. Suck it. I got I, two I, words for you. I honestly might be proud of him. I might be like, all right, you get You would not be proud of him. You would not be proud of him. You would grab him by his shirt and you'd be like, oh, so we want to wrestle him. Yeah, if he did it with the knowledge in mind, trying to be a smart ass, I might give him a pass. If he was trying to be a smart ass better. Uh my son, I was telling you guys, I was telling Tyler David when we did the fat boy. I was like, it's kind of funny because my son uh he's like my he's eight, but he's like Guys, when I say obsessed, he's obsessed. So like he's been upset for a couple of years. So he's the one that's kind of got me kind of back into it a little bit, kind of from the old school standpoint. Like I've really been out of for like 25 years. And he kind of slowly got me back. So like once in a while, he'll I, I'll think he's serious. He'll be like, Hey dad, what's that kid's name in second grade? And I'll be like, Oh, Austin, be like, it doesn't matter. And I'll be like, Oh, you son of a like, <laughs> So he is really smart. So, he, no, he'll he like things together properly. <laughs> And I'll be like, he knows the bit. He gets yeah, in trouble. He does. There's so like, Aaron. I'll be in him mess with each other. I'll be like, I'll be like, what did Mrs. Williams? What's her name in there? And he'll be like, ah, dang it, I fell for it. So it's, it's kind of funny how wrestling. For me, it was always like me and my brother were getting fights about it because I'd be like, oh my gosh, I just want to watch sports here, baseball tonight, and you're watching freaking Sting here on WCW fight the Lex Luger. Oh, that's like a, I'm not. Am I? That's a dated Darren. reference, Darren. Yeah. That's but that's what it would be like. We'd be upstairs arguing about it, but he got up there first, and my mom wouldn't want... let anybody else get the controller because he was. In... Yeah, so I like. Mom, he won't <laughs> let me watch baseball. He wants to watch Sting scream instead. Yeah, or Chuck Damn Norris or something like that. He'd watch Texas hey, Rangers. Chuck like Norris that. was cool, dude. Uh, it was good. It was alright at times. It was like over the all story, but it was fun with it. So. That was it. Was like, I, I thought that I even thought the tag team match was good. Which one? The first, uh, the last one with The Rock. He did better than I thought. Oh, the you Rock know what? I better, but I didn't think I the power. Think I didn't think the move at the end was as good as as the, it was a little slower. Well, obviously, getting what I, I would say I didn't like the Usos match. Oh, it, was it was interesting. It was bold. It was yeah. It was not the payoff that they wanted, and I feel like they would say that too because that's been okay. they've been kind of open and saying that they have always wanted to wrestle each other at WrestleMania, and that wasn't the match that they wanted to have. But they, I, they didn't have very much time. They got kind of got pushed around by the other matches on the show. Um, they had two of the same Rocky storylines playing, or two different Rocky storylines playing out on both nights because the Sami Zayn Chad Gable was like a bold ripoff. It was. Uh, Rocky uh, Sylvester Stallone could sue WWE for that storyline. Uh, don't forget, you owe me a favor. Hmm, where have I heard that before? Yeah, what's, and, what's the European guy's name? The kind of tall guy, what's his name again? Gunta. Gunta. Do you think he's he in the race now that he got knocked out of the intro? Do you think he now is gonna get like a title chance sometime? Oh, I long? think he's going Drew McIntyre, I think he's winning world yeah. heavyweight championship. Well, well, hold on, hold on. Damian Priest has the World Heavyweight Championship. Oh yeah, no, that's what I mean. He'll be, he'll be Pete. He'll, he I, will beat Priest. Does Thank Roman Reigns take a year stand. off? Does I think he takes take some time. I, I think he need. I think he has like medical things going on. That's the thing about him is that he has that leukemia, and it's kind of like always, yeah, it present. It's never a hundred percent away, um, which is incredible because you think about it. He's had the title for thirteen hundred and like sixty-one days. Or what, do you like think, that. what do you think happens with Paul Heyman if he's gone for a little bit? 
He'll find Paul somebody Heyman. else. Paul Heyman can do whatever the. Fuck That's what I'm saying. Like, do you no, just, do not, you not to be brass, but if we're talking about Paul Heyman, I bet I feel like I have to be. Paul Heyman can find the next pile of you know what, and he will press him between his butt cheeks and make a diamond. <laughs> He's gonna that's do it with what, Austin Theory. That's my uh, that's my. I, I, I would love that because Austin Theory has a lot of untapped potential, and he's so dumb right now with Grayson Waller. That yeah. that should make it's the worst. That was the worst part of WrestleMania was that match, the the yeah. one where they were in. I didn't you know like what, that, except I did like our truth at the end of it. Yeah. You know, you, you know what move was the one where I was like, okay, this this sport is a different. Like, or I was like, these guys are legit. Where people put their like, literally, you're trusting other people with your life. Like, was that? I don't okay. know. I don't even know enough about the guys. Know it, but it was the ladder match where they were trying to get the belt at the top, and there was some guy in green underwear, basically, that got lifted up from one other guy at the top of the ladder, and he fell back, and they just like right there. I'm like, man, just like. I don't know. Well, five inches the ladder one or the other, and you're like your neck is the in a different was story or something. One, like the, I just remember thinking, like, gosh, that was ballsy to let a guy like just slam you like that. That was incredible. I saw that, and they had some yeah. other ones where they were jumping off into like tables. So that that match to me was pretty good. I thought just from that standpoint. Did you guys watch? I, here's the here's the thing that nobody's going to want to admit, but I, and I feel like Nico and I didn't even touch on this enough, uh, and he was there. Logan Paul is legitimately a good performer in the wwe he yeah. Yeah. the fact that he carries the title that he does it's the u.s title so it's it's not like the intercontinental title where you're expected to be the best one in the in the business the guy doesn't have any of the experience that, of the, any of the people that he's wrestling and he doesn't look half bad that that was a good triple threat match at wrestlemania it was entertaining was it as, it as good as it could have been like if it was kevin owens and randy orton would it have been better yes but the three of them told a compelling story. And I think that you can get by with that because that's what the U S title is there for. The U S title is there. The U S title makes no sense now that we don't have territories when there's no territory outside of the U S that it's bullshit. It makes no sense. You just call it the U S title to to have the flag on it and to sell merchandise. That's all the WWE does with that one. So Logan Paul being the champion actually makes no, and it's great. And it makes sense that he is, It's all that's all he is. He's selling his his stuff. Prime, imagine, look, think about that. All of the people who watched WrestleMania this weekend stared at a prime bottle in the center of the mat for the entire weekend. And when the prime bottle got beat up, it was fantastic. That was also fun. I I, I like how they don't mention the location for 2025. Uh, I know. I was I was looking because I told my brother we got to do what Nico did. I'm I'm buying standby tickets as early as I can. I like that. Of- it helps storyline a little bit, don't you? Like I for me it does. Like if I know that somebody might go to this place and that's their hometown, like that might affect how I look at a storyline. For me personally, I mean I know I, it's I see that. Kind of- Is there some? I, I don't know. I don't know if there's a situation. If I attended a WrestleMania, I don't, I think that. It, it's it's legitimately just to go and experience that because a not like it's not been popular, but it wasn't the cool thing to do when when I was in in school. No, you guys were still that era. Weren't you it, it was the it was the PG era, but there were still people who yeah. liked it. But it was like very more. It was much more niche, and it was actually more fun to be on the internet talking about it than actually watching. At WWE, and that's where I got I fell back in into it because I it was uh whatculture.com and they would do like fantasy bookings, and then I would come up with fantasy bookings in my head instead of studying or whatever I was supposed to be doing in college. <laughs> uh it, it sounds bad coming from a teacher, but I, I learned the hard way. That's how I learned my so lessons. We have good teachers, we teach to not we have do so it. many teachers on this network. Can you guys realize that? Yeah, that's that's what there's a point where I wanted to be a teacher. And I found out what it paid, and I was like, "Nope." Yeah, you <laughs> join the club. Oh, if you smart. join you the to... club, you the more years you put in, the more money you make. <laughs> it's what it makes. You yeah, want to make wait it's like a pyramid long. scheme. Exactly, right, so. guys. Uh, I want you to tell you guys have a great show. Um, the worst female right now in the WWE is the new <laughs> Tiffany girl. I cannot stand her character, and she had a uh, wardrobe malfunction on Friday night. I don't know if anybody else caught that. Um, it was minor. It was slight, but if you were watching the match, you saw it. And um, sure got I hate her set. character, man. She, I hate her character. For a chick, she's horrible. Josh, she does it well, though. She plays it well. 
uh, the, the ch my wife always like change the watch. My wife always says change those. I don't want. It. She'll say it to my son. She'll change change those. And she's like, I don't get it. She's like, I don't. So uh, those ones are always my son, my daughter. Those funny in the wrestling. Pick the girls. Pick the girls. She's like four years old. Always telling them to pick. So I was like, well, at least she wants them to be picked. Or that hey, have a good NASCAR show tonight. I'll see you Wednesday. Jimmy, it was good seeing you, buddy. It's been a while. Yeah, it's good to see you too. Let's get you on an off season here. Maybe when we do Colts or something else like that, we'll you want to talk AFC South will be coming up here soon. I feel like we'll go AFC then NFC. I don't really have a plan. We're just kind of pulling it out. I can, but we'll... I can talk all kinds of crap about the Colts. You want me to? Jimmy, we have a plan. We're just we're going division by. We have a plan. We, have, we just don't know what it is. We have. Plan. Darren, it's much more <laughs> impressive if you tell people you don't have a plan and then continue to follow through. That's a storyline, people. We like it. I like a wrestling storyline. All right, you guys, have a great show. I will, uh, Jimmy. I'll see you later. Darren, I will see you Wednesday night. All right, man. Take it easy. Later. That was fun having it pop. In. I I love like the fact that we were able to kind of go off with us to give us a different feel for the show here a little bit. Yeah. Show people over that. I mean, I'm telling you, like, if, for me, it was actually a big deal. I didn't get to talk about it enough with my on the podcast this morning, so it was fun. And it is fun that you see like professional athletes, like you see, you saw Kelsey, you saw. John, he's, uh, was Jason it Kelsey, did you see how easily he jumped over that top rope? <laughs> and this is a guy that's been saying, like, I got to retire because of my hips. I was like, mm -hmm, I think you guys, you got, are you going to wrestle in a couple of WWE matches, Jason? That's what this feels like. This is, this feels like where we're going here. And, uh, Lane Johnson is, <laughs> those two are big. If you don't look small in a ring with other WWE athletes, you are big. So, big. Uh, it was it was impressive. It was cool all the all all the way around. They're in a good uh, spot right now, WWE. What? They seem like they're in a good spot right now. Well, I mean, one hundred fifty-seven thousand live attendance over two days. Uh, however many people watch it on live on Peacock, plus through whatever illegal stream that you watch it from, because that still happens. Uh, everybody's giving Triple H his flowers. You and I talked all, all about that, so we don't need to talk anymore. But just like, yeah, it, it's in an interesting scenario. And honestly, it's it's very similar to the 90s. And I know that you would know this, but like when WCW was starting to, because AEW was cool for a second. It yeah. was new. It was cool. It got no. good. And now it's kind of like going over the, it, it, they call it jumping the shark, but it's kind of jumped the shark. And now you're starting to fizzle out. It's either going to just be TNA where nobody ever watches it. Or WWE is going to buy it, and then that's the next uh, invasion angle. Like, we're just seeing a repeat of what we saw in the 90s happen with WCW and AEW, it feels like. And it seems like Triple H is a big part of it with it. Hey, uh, the wrestling part, that was fun for it. That, that really was a, kind of a different for it. And, we, you know, obviously, as we kind of break through. We're we versatile just, here. It's called the Variety yeah. Sports Network. Yeah, and we've been doing it. One thing we've been trying to talk to the guys, we've been trying to do more shorts, like, with the show. So that we'll be cutting some of that stuff in our conversation with that along the way here with it. Did you we we had you wrote down AFC East this of the week you wrote like you said with Josh yes you're right it is a little random but we went with AFC East this week um, what they traded for Diggs you know like what what what's kind of your well, big stuff with them or do you have a different storyline you want to go with the to before start? we get into the modern day team I feel like uh, the biggest storyline over the last two days especially with the NFL and, and the AFC East especially is because of his ties to the Bills but it's OJ and and him passing away because he was I don't know if you can get a more mired figure and and you can still look at his statistics and there were seasons like he's having better seasons than a lot of the guys that we've seen dominate the league for the last 10 years uh, yeah. I don't want to I'm not going to read off the statistics because I don't really feel like giving him credit uh, because I do believe that he was <laughs> I I laughed much more at the tweets that were like, oh, thank God, OJ can finally rest, knowing that his wife's killer has finally been killed. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, that too soon, but yes, that was good. And, what year and now you I then Jimmy. What, what year were you? What year were you I was born in 97, so I was born after. I was born three years after. What did after your parents say about it? What how what do you, what's your key? Because I was in sixth grade listening to John Men's Club in my and we had it on the TV. So that's my my grandparents talked about it. Every single day for a year with everybody. So my perspective is going to be a whole lot Did different. Did you watch the chase? Were you yep. able to watch yep, the chase? I was watching the Knicks Rockets thing. So, <laughs> no yes, way. Yeah. No way. Okay. Yeah. Um, so my perspective is a lot different than yours with it. Yeah. If, if I were to sum it up in, in an expression, it would be. 
<laughs> because uh, if you're that, and I can't, I, we watched the series on FXX as a family when they did the one with Cuba Gooding Jr. Um, yeah. My brother's a, he wants to be in, in law school. And he wants to be an attorney. So it was interesting. We were watching that. And just the way that the prosecution botched, you you had all of this. It was circumstantial, but you didn't have to present it as circumstantial. And you let OJ manipulate, and you let him do all of these things. And, and he walked away from probably one of the more open and shut cases that should have ever been happening in the time. Uh, and, and OJ is a... You, you want to think about these athletes as like great benevolent people. And there are some that deserve that moniker. Uh, and this is why I wanted to bring up the topic is because it, it's always up for discussion. Uh, these people, uh, there's, there's a high likelihood that like they're psychotic, sociopathic. We don't know anything about these guys. They carry a ball on Sunday and we watch them run around on the field for three hours. It's all we really know about these people. But the thing about him that was so much different was like was the fact was the fact that it was like like I said we're it's hard, it, it, like I always say nineteen ninety four so I feel like we're a ways out from this it's like thirty years it's like it's thirty years that somebody more somebody died from the you know obviously so we're never always putting disrespect on that but like you it'd be hard to write a script that happened the way with a star athlete he was on CBS he was like their number one guy with things he was on TV shows that show TV. seems so ridiculous. That yeah. docu that docudrama seems so ridiculous. The juice, and, and then the, how, and the Bronco you, chase, just everything, man. Like the you trial. Just sit there and be, you're like, how how is Ross from Friends actually pulling this off right now? It it, it was one of the weirdest moments. I like I said, I was yeah, you know, like I said, I was in, I was in sixth grade, like why, why or was, I think I was in fifth. We went to our history class, watching it. Like just I just remember it being that big of a deal. To yeah. where our, our teachers wanted to put it on TV in June. Oh, if I, as a social studies teacher, especially if I was teaching anything that had to do with like American government or politics or judicial system, anything like that, I would be showing this. I would not plan anything for like three weeks. Oh, yes, please. We're going <laughs> to talk about how the, the judicial system is fair and how the jury process works. And then when they have to bring in new jurors because they accidentally read the newspaper, it'd be like, oh, and I got two more weeks of material right here. Um I'm impressed that you wanted to bring him up though in that with that because like I like I know a lot of people like they're like well we you want to talk it's like still was a big part of like for me like seriously it was a big part of like just a moment in for a year in my well, life it was a he's big not the only person that's done something and you had it scrolling across the bottom of the screen when Josh was on and I saw the Rasheed Rice thing but you have guys on you're the, you're a fan of a lot it, for those of you that are just now tuning in to talking the gridiron this is an off-season episode so that's why we had wrestling up front and, and everything like that we're having fun yeah. here it's a sun, yeah. we're teachers it's a sunday night we're trying to enjoy it before we go to hell for a week no, i'm just kidding <laughs> i that's how, you're not too far off on that description there uh darren is a fan of the las vegas raiders i am a fan of the cincinnati Bengals. we are very familiar with having to defend people like hey it looks like he's turning his life around. Okay. That, uh, that's something that we always have to do. I, I wanted to bring up OJ because like I mentioned, as a football player, you can't mention like too much bad Heisman trophy winner was the NFL's lead, leading rusher for however many years he was able to hold on to that record, like an absolute stud on the field. Uh, but it turned out to be one of the more, he, that, He's so sociopath. Like, that's sociopath oh, yeah. sociopathy to a T, where yeah. you get away with it on a technicality. You lose the civil suit, so then you're already pissed off because you hate losing because you think that you're above the law and and, and nothing should be sticking to you. You sell off all of your shit to pay for this, and then you get arrested for trying to steal the stuff that you sold. For nine years, he goes to jail. That was, that was honestly, I knew about him being in jail for stealing his stuff back. And I knew about the family guy clip where he stabbed somebody at the very end of the episode after he finally gets them to all believe that he's a good guy. Again, those are the two things that I knew about OJ Simpson. He's like, Oh yeah, I made a mistake and it won't happen again. And then in the next two seconds, and, uh, and the juice is loose again. <laughs> he goes back there with that. I forgot about that. 
Uh, yeah, so that was that was a big story there with it. You're right. Uh, you got a you got any last thoughts with it before we move no, on? No, I just think it's it's a perspective that people always have to yeah, keep in mind. Was. Like like there's people all throughout the league are so whatever team that you root for, you have somebody on that roster that's probably done something that you would deem unsavory. So all right, it, don't like ignore it, but it's also something like don't judge it because if you judge them, you're you're. It's just not a good idea. Right? Well, the like modern just, day example would be what Aaron Hernandez, I guess, in some regard, that would be the way that we a little different uh, scenario, but that would be the modern day guy there with that. Uh, Bills, I guess they do trade. Yeah. With, go to fo- a straight football here for a minute. We'll kind of move our way through it here, probably a little quicker with it. They trade Diggs um, to the Texans. It seems like there's an opportunity for them to trade up in the draft. That's kind of just what I put down is some storylines with it. I'm sure you have some other stuff with them as well. They're losing a lot, and you're banking on the fact that Josh Allen is going to be this guy that's able to take you over the hump. Um, and I and I was surprised how much I was in the minority. I know that when we talked about the Stefan Diggs move, uh, and I posted a couple things on our account, I said the culture killer strikes again. He's just <laughs> finding another I, – basically, I should have made the meme where the Grim Reaper's just knocking on doors because it's just Stefan Diggs finding new locker rooms to go in and infect. Yeah. Um Maybe he had a point, I guess. There's a perspective to be seen, like where Diggs – we're getting close every time, but we can't get past the divisional round. Why? We're paying our quarterback. Am I not getting the ball enough? Maybe maybe he didn't present it in the right way, but maybe he was right to be frustrated because now you look at the Buffalo Bills and uh, if we look at the division where you have the Bills, Jets, um, Patriots, and – Dolphins. No, like Dolphins. Is Allen oh, having to do too much? He's, he, a, he is having to do too much, but honestly, at this point, I don't know if he knows how to do it any other way. I feel like Josh Allen needs to do hero ball because that's what he's always played in the NFL. He needs to have the ball in his hands 98% of the time, and 2% of the time he'll turn around and hand it off to whomever they have in the backfield. I mean, they got Curtis Samuel from the, from the commanders. That's the receiver they brought in along the way here we'll see if he can kind of jump start it i feel like the digs the we'll get into that there that addition for the texans in a while we'll see when we have josh back on to talk about the afc south we'll talk about uh I feel like that one might be well we'll get into that one. we'll be so we'll see if they trade up for the jets here will Sala survive the jet season i mean him and the owner just keep going at it it seems he's, like he's gonna have to do a lot early on because he's not gonna have a very long leash i think the the fact that he's still there he should be thanking his lucky stars because I I don't know. I, I guess it's the avalanche in 2023. The injuries, I guess. He, no, it's it's the avalanche in 2023 and the Jets in this past season where they handled injuries to star or key or crucial or pivotal players worse than anything that I've ever seen. Because the Avalanche knew that uh, there's a possibility Landis God never comes back last season, and then at the trade deadline they don't make any moves and they don't they don't do anything. That's the fair. Jets know, okay, Aaron Rodgers continues to tell you, I'll be back by week 11. You have plenty of medical professionals in your team to be able to look at you and say, hey, that's impossible. <laughs> he is not coming back this season. He'll be very lucky to start next season. The only reason why he's going to start this upcoming season is because it was the very first weekend, five minutes into the game. He literally lasted like 72 hours into last season. So it takes you a year to recover. A year is now starting of the the next year. That's true. Uh, What what did you think about them bringing in Smith at left tackle from the Cowboys and Mike Williams who gets hurt? He got, like those are your other two big like wide re- veteran signings there. They bring in Kinlaw, who's been eh, for the for the Niners at first round uh, as a first round pick. Uh, I think that they're they're probably like Williams maybe. I I don't know if they're going to be better on offense. If if Aaron Rodgers plays, then you expect them to be. But did they waste their defense was so good and and it's unfortunate. If you're a Jets fan, I would be so mad that I wasted a defense that was like that. Um. Oh, I I get so frustrated when it happens either side of the ball. You're like, my gosh, we're scoring 30 points. We're giving up 34. Like, what is happening here? Every time? It was, like, that was how we – until we saw it prove with Peyton Manning 
that was the narrative in, in 2015. I remember it clear as day. Like, we can't score more than 22 points. How are we ever going to expect to win a Super Bowl? And then our defense was like, wait a second, hold my beer. I'm going to make Cam Newton quit in the second quarter. Watch this. <laughs> we're gonna get that with it. How about we talked about another OJ? How about this OJ? OJ may uh, can he uh, develop the new Pats era? What QB do they draft in the third pick? Do they draft a QB? I would think they would. I heard May's a big pick from the, from North Carolina. Daniel they draft Drake school. May. I've heard that that's because uh, so you know who Merrill Hodge is, right? Yes. Merrill Hodge has been on the record saying that Drake May is not only such a bust that if you draft him within the top five, you are totally corrupting your franchise and, and going to poison them for the next years. He's like, this is a guy that's going to get you fired. Merrill Hodge goes all the way to this guy. This guy, if you draft Please him in the top five. Draft him. Please, well, <laughs> honestly, is it better for – or here's the question that we should answer. Is it more insufferable when the Patriots are, – are Patriots fans more insufferable when the Patriots are good or when the Patriots are bad? Because him, I can't really find – I hate them either way. I and, do and now having to do this show and having to do my show with all the NFL stuff and Boston, I'm not going to say that I don't dislike I, – I like Boston. I like the Whitey Bulger story. There's a lot of mafia ties, both Irish and Italian, and that happens to be my heritage. Like I'm not totally against Boston, except I just – I can't stand any of your sports teams. Any of them. I'm with you. I'm with you on. I respect the fan base. I always said Red Sox were the best out there with it, but they deserve a little losing here for a little bit. Here, they will see if he develops it. OJ, they didn't sign anybody. Uh, are they, are they, massive are in the they offseason two, either. Are they three? They're three, aren't they? They're the third yeah. overall pick. Uh, yes, they signed Jacoby Brissett as a as a quarterback. They resigned. Uh, what did they uh, take? JJ JJ McCarthy at number three. Jennings at linebacker. They signed as well. Osborne at receiver. They signed. So they didn't really go. I know my friend Adam out here is a big Patriots fan. He was not happy with the uh, with the offseason they had. So I would say he wants Daniels from LSU. That's who he really wants. Uh, so we'll see if that's I, what they can get. I think that he's going. So I've done a mock draft video, which people can go back and watch at uh, uh, the Farhan Bench YouTube channel yeah. at Field TV Pod. Um, and I did Jaden Daniels number two to Washington. I think you're right. I think that uh, Washington tried. And I don't think that it was anything Sam Howell did or didn't do, but they just had nothing to to do with anything around him. So last year he ended up getting sacked as many times as he was uh, and, and just never was able to develop. And Washington tried to say, oh, we want to keep him around. All signs point to this new regime saying, whoever was here understands Snyder needs to go. This is like a purge. I am – I am the chemotherapy. Dan Snyder was the cancer. I am purging everything, and that includes possibly healthy blood cells. So while Sam Howell, you may have not been the issue last season, you were around during the Dan Snyder era, and I just can't – there's a possibility that you're going to infect the rest of the team. So I don't want you here. I need to get rid of you, and I need to bring in something new. And I think Jane Daniels is probably going to be more for uh, Washington. But if he falls – if he falls, Jaden Daniels would be an interesting – because remember, for a while there, Cam Newton was kind of fun with Bill Belichick. Yeah. I feel like that might be in – and now with the Patriots, with the under the new, new era, era, new era where, where a coach is actually – I think that's why he playing. wants him. I think that's why my buddy wants him. I think he feels like maybe there's a little bit more potential up there with them. And it'll be interesting. Like, they didn't get anybody – like, again, they continue to not sign too many guys in free agency – uh, Robert Kraft is too busy spending his weekends in Florida for he's got, whatever he's, reason. He's got those whatever words. reason he does that for. Good transition there to Florida. Did the Miami do enough? They always seem like they've been dying out as we've been, been doing the last the show the last two years, right? They've died out a little bit at the end. And we'll do a deep dive as we get in closer to the season here. We're just having some fun here tonight, uh, early April here before the draft. Uh, has Hill broken down is what I put as a note. To his contract, what's your kind of thoughts on the Dolphins here? Um, I'll get into the signing. Today. I've I've told the uh, I've told the story on the show before, but I I do listen to Mark Schlereth quite a bit. He's yep. on our local radio station, and they were playing their second Super Bowl, but that the Broncos won when they went back to back under Elway. That was in Miami, mm -hmm. and that was since they had already played a Super Bowl. They went out two weeks before, and Shanahan let them have a week to do whatever. 
And he's basically like, by Saturday night, I want that to be where your detox starts. By Monday morning, we show up, we game plan, it's a normal week. And then they ended up winning. But that Monday that they came back into the facility, one of their like backup guards walked into the offensive line room and he just starts writing on the grease board. He's going with his expo marker and he's like, <laughs> and the offensive linemen are sitting there like they're drinking their coffee, eating their donuts. Like what's going on? He turns around and he sits back down in his chair. Okay. Spill it. What? What's the deal? This is why no team from Miami will ever win a professional sports championship because those are all the strip clubs that I visited within the last week. <laughs> 22 separate names. Like it, and, and having a guy – here's the thing. Tyreek Hill thrived in Kansas City because they're, it's hard. Rasheed Rice begs to differ, but it's hard to get yourself in trouble in Kansas City. In Miami, uh, you have a lot of temptation. You have a lot of – But that's not why they're getting bad at the end of the season. Well, uh, I feel like they're probably – I mean, at, ty- at the end of the season when Tyreek Hill thinks we're, we are what we are. He's hurt. Is he breaking down? I don't know if he – I mean – or is it bad luck? Explosive, he is an explosive athlete, and he is getting older. And explosive athletes lose their athleticism as they get older. Um, I I just don't I, – I think that Mike McDaniel, I'd like to think that he's smart enough to be able to get him over to home. But last year was his first crack at things. Um, Tua is Tua. Let me interesting if he give him a massive contract, though. I don't think that he will. Yeah. I don't think that they're going to uh, – I could see maybe a bridge deal offer. I, I feel like – and, and, No, I just think that instead of giving like – because normally a second contract is when you get five to six years and all of your big money. Oh, instead of doing that, Miami maybe goes to Tua and, and tells him, gotcha. hey, yeah, nobody, no, nobody's really going to give you as good of a shot as we are. We're not going to give you – a ton of commitment, but we'll give you two years guaranteed, say six, eight million, so sixteen million guaranteed contract. We can do that for the next two years, and if we can figure it out, we figure it out. If we don't, hey, no hard feelings. You go out, you get your money wherever else is backup, because that's what Tua. That, that's where we are with Tua's career. I don't think that he's done enough to prove that he deserves a second contract. The concussions were scary, so. Yeah. I, I, I don't think that Miami it, or any organization in the NFL is going to want to look at committing to Tua, but I think that you can give him two years, and that is going to be a, a very, very easy decision at that point because we've had uh, – what is he? Is he going into year four? Yep. Yeah, so he's uh, going, going into year four, so he's got three seasons, and one of them was injury riddled, so you can't even really count it. How much does he get done at the end of this season, and is it worth – Miami of maybe negotiating a bridge deal or is there a team? I don't know. Do you think that there's a team desperate enough to throw as much money as Tua wants at him? Oh, hi, Raiders. hi Raiders. Hi Broncos. Would you, I, do, you would do that. I'm not saying I would, but I'm saying I think there's teams out there that are desperate for quarterbacks and Tua's numbers are his numbers. And I think he proven he's won a championship. I think he'll easily get over $180 million. <laughs> Five year deal, which maybe isn't that much, but I think he'll get that. Have, have you ever seen a blazing saddle? <laughs> yeah, I have. <laughs> Holy underwear. Holy underwear. I hear you on that. Uh, so we got that. We'll see what that dolphins with it. I have a feeling, Jimmy, we'll be talking a lot about them again next year as we head into the offseason preview here with it. Hey, as news and notes here at the bottom, uh, people falling around here the night. My favorite one I had as loser of the week this week up for Fat Boy was Tom Brady says he's. Not opposed to coming back late in the season. You just stay out of the game. We don't need you anymore. Your boy Higgins, he's tagged. As you know, he says he expects to stay with your Bengals. Ayuk rumors going wild in San Francisco. His his agent said that, no, 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 there's no rumor going out there. But there is no doubt about it. He wants to get paid. So, you know, that's coming. Uh, so, they're with it. So, a little, little few news and notes here at the bottom as well. Uh, it's you guys got to have Higgins. You have to have him back with you. For this season, I think that's it. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the Bengals do when they franchise tag you. Maybe they, like, go to your mother's house and, like, piss on her doorstep or something. <laughs> because so when they franchise tag people, it pisses them off to no end and, like, <laughs> makes it so that 
because the, the whole idea of the franchise tag is I'm going to keep you around for this year so that we can continue to negotiate your contract and figure yeah. something out. That's the whole reason why it's in the collective bargaining agreement as an option. But for whatever reason, it seems like when the Bengals players do this and they get franchise tagged, it's like they go, Puh. yeah, I'm franchise tagging you, bitch. <laughs> you know, what, 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 I, I, what did I do? It's like, I, I wanted to stay here, but we just needed a little bit like, Mike Brown is still sitting on his wallet. Just you didn't have to be mean about it. You didn't have to be rude. But oh. maybe that's what the Bengals are doing. It it just seems so odd to me that every time this is supposed to be, you get paid decent money as a franchise tag player. Let's not yeah. forget that. People like that. Oh, but if you get injured, yeah, but you can get injured. Up until re- very recently in the NFL, you can get injured at any point, and your contract is done. So good goodbye, forgotten. Because there is no money. guaranteed. It's not baseball. It's not basketball. It's not hockey. There is no guaranteed money unless you very much you need to negotiate that into your contract. So uh, I think I'm, he should stay. I'm with you. I, I, I with you. I, I agree, totally agree with that. And he's a great receiver along with Chase. I feel like the, the the combination of both those together is a very special duo. They're different, and the one's bigger. I, feel, I just think they're a good duo together. I don't think he is yeah. the number one. I don't That's think, what I mean. I think it's a good duo together. No, I know, like, and I, but I, I'm, yeah. I'm even saying if he wants to go out and test it in free agency, I don't think that T is the number one receiver. I think T does very much. He does yeah, a lot right. more as the second guy that you don't have to worry about because you, you can defend size now. You can yeah. defend these natural gifts, but when you have to worry about it one on one because on the other side you have Jamar Chase, who's probably the greatest arguably the greatest receiver in the game right now. I know that I'm going to have a text message from, you know, who's ex, uh, you know, who is his, her brother. And he's going to be telling me how good Justin Jefferson is and, and how much he's better than Jeff, uh, Jamar Chase. But I think Jamar is the number one receiver. No, I think you're, I think you're right. I don't know why he would want to leave that situation. No, you I have Joe that. Burrow. You have Jamar Chase, whether he's or not they make spirit, you a lot of money. Burrow's going to make you a lot of money. He's going to, uh, uh, if you stay there, think of the endorsements. Think yeah. of what, whatever. But New Balance. If, 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 say he goes to the Raiders, who's going to be his quarterback? Yeah, exactly. Minshew Not anybody compared to Joe Burrow. Mr. Minshew coming in here with you. We got there. Oh, I love Gardner Minshew, but Joe Burrow would. Yeah, Joe no. Burrow is uh, the Leo DiCaprio scene from Wolf of Wall Street, where he's first selling his stock and teaching everybody else his methods. And he's like licking his fingers. So that, that's as far as I'll go because I know we're not quite. You're still at like 720. So we're not quite at like X rated hours. So that's as far as I'm going to go. There's right, a, right, there's seven, a radio seven. show that I've been starting to listen to on their podcast version, but they always like to push it. They basically yeah. have they're, they're the trashy radio station that they somehow convince everybody to call in and tell their worst stories. Like, tell us about the time you had relations with somebody besides your partner. <laughs> Uh, everybody and calls people call in and they're like oh well it was this time and then somebody else calls in and is like hey that was my girlfriend oh, they go, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, that's what i want right there as we get we're kind of glad it's so true people like that's whatever that's what sells jim we know that it's not a good segment we have it's the it's the drama it's the it's the unnecessary conversations we have with you that sells uh can i get to trivia with you this week this might be a tough one for you but I know, but I think you might be able to get it. You know the game a little bit here with the uh, NFL trivia. With it. Who am I? All right. Uh, he was named – I was named NFL defensive player in 2007. So I was named as defensive player 2007. That's your that's your first hint. Pretty decent hit there with it. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to take a guess on it, but that, that is the first one. Defensive player 2007. I'll give you a hint number two here. Uh I was selected to the Pro Bowl twice in my career and retired in 2013. Big hint here at, at safety. Now I'm totally off because I was thinking 2007 and then 2007 into 2008. That was the year that the Giants beat the Patriots. I was thinking maybe like OCU, Manura, Michael Strahan. But now as a safety, I'm, I'm off. So I'm going to have to reorient myself. All right, let's go live the last 10 here. Hit number three. See if he knows his – this will be a college knowledge. I went to Iowa. I was a safety from Iowa that was a defensive player of the year. At, uh, can I have conference that he played in? 
Big Big Ten, Iowa. No, no, no. In, in no, the NFL, AFC, AFC South. AFC South. I'll give you. I'll give you a clue. You can spell his first name backwards, for forward and backwards. <laughs> it's the same Bob way. Bob Sanders. That a boy. That a boy. I that loved is- playing as Bob Sanders in in in, in Madden 08. That was right. awesome. As we get his kind of stuff up here on the screen, this is some of his hits and highlights. And I thought this was kind of, yeah. As we do it through it, like these are launches. He was he was one of those guys that obviously he'd, had a short be, career. He'd be one. fined so hard today. He he oh would my. never get on guy. the field. Just levels the dude right here. Just bang right to your helmet, man. Take a seat, me. Right there with it. Like you're right for video game purposes. I mean, him. Paul I would Mollo, take. I would turn the offsides off so that you can just sprint at the line the entire time because it wouldn't let you cross. And I would go and I would trade change to Bob Sanders. And I would be blitzing as like an extra defender off the edge. I ba- I was basically running like uh, that free safety middle blitz that, that they have. But I was already having a head start. So the other guy would snap or the computer would snap. And Bob Sanders would be in his quarterback's grill, like breaking his leg. And I'd be like, mm, sorry about it. Uh, and you're right. Like in Madden, safeties like him were the best to use. They were like the best absolutes. Like these are some of his great plays here on the screen. He was good. off like near here. Like he was so good. He how does amazing. Iowa get all these good defenders to Iowa? By the way, Iowa they always have a way of getting these defenders along the way. Um, so you I just thought a touchdown though. Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Clark outscored the uh, Iowa football team in her time at Iowa. So shout out Caitlin Clark. Also oh. shout out. South Carolina and UConn because March Madness has ended. We didn't get to talk about the ending. No, yet. we didn't. Super Bowl here. Here's this last, the pick to end. It. Ooh, it. Bob Sanders. I was it the clue. Spell it backwards. That's one of them. I like it. That was well, I was I, when you said safety. I was, I did start thinking Bob Sanders initially, and then I asked you conference. Um, but you know when you hear safety, you automatically think like Troy Polamalu or Ed Reed because I think those are the two. As good as Bob Sanders is, Ed Reed and Troy Polamalu are just that much better. Well, they are. They're really just one of the best. And as I as we kind of wrap up the show here, I kind of been doing the we did the we did the NFL flashback last week in the video. I wanted to show you. Speaking of Big Bob and those big hits, here's a college hit. Just because we have the draft coming up from 1990, and you talk about a guy. Uh, this against Auburn, Ohio State versus Auburn. Um, basically, the guy gets absolutely jacked up on a screen. It kind of reminds me of the Reggie Bush kind of feel on it as I get it up here. So let me add it to the stage here. Uh, did it go here? Sustained drive to keep his defense off. Slash out oh. And there is the biggest hit maybe Woo. in the team 89, 90 bowl You season. got barbecue back there? You did it right now. As he was struck by Zach Dumas. Zach Dumas. Feelings. Dumas, the fellow that Zach came Dumas to this university as a running back and said, you know, I don't Matt like Dumas. this. Oh, what I'll do is hit people. How many times do you think he called him a Zach Dumbass? A knockout oh, ball. man. He got you tight. see this ball now? This, he's going to get hit the, just about the time that ball hits his hands. Oh, Dumas just unloads on him. beautiful. That was totally clean even now. Oh, man. 1990s football there at the back. Uh, out there at Ohio State. Yes, boys there. and girls, by the way, the scoreboard didn't always used to be displayed on the screen. No, it did not. Man, and there no. was no first down marker. There was no first down yellow there line. There was no yellow line. You're right. There was no yellow line. That's a great call there, Jimmy, with that. Man, that's, but I – that was a mass. That's like as – that's as bone crunching as I've seen. When I saw that, I thought – well, Jordan, I thought Ohio State with him was going to be on. I wanted to see if he knew who Dumas was. But uh, that hit was just – and that reminded me of the Reggie Bush one a little bit. That's the one I can think of. Like quarterback oh, makes was, that little. You remember I was that thinking, one? Uh, well, cause there was no fumble. It reminds me a lot That's of the true. Denzel Ward, which is what I was doing. The Gus Johnson when Denzel Ward hits the guy on Maryland. You got Bob? You back there? You That's didn't fight me? Hurt my feelings. I love <laughs> Gus Johnson because I love Joel Clack because he's a Colorado guy. That pretty um, good guy. That pretty good of Gus. Pretty impressive. Well, you know, I, I played a lot of Madden 12 with he he's got to get away from the cap speed. 
did. I did not know. By the way, I did not know Gus Johnson was black. So when he was like, you got barbecue back there, I was like, what the fuck? Did he get fired? <laughs> I did get fired for Yeah, he, there's certain things he can say. Was, and then he, he was, was and then I actually saw a picture of him. I was like, oh, great. Yeah, no, he the best. It's a good thing he didn't get fired. Me and Tyler were <laughs> he pissed. He could say that. Me and Tyler were like, come on, CBS, sign him to do a contract for a month so he can do NCAA tournament games. What are we doing here? He was, he's, I know that he likes doing football, but I think he said that basketball is his, his, his Gus Johnson's favorite sport. Oh, man. If you look at his calls with some of that stuff, it's as good as it is, as good as it gets uh, there with it. Uh, What are we at? 101 here on Talking the Grad Iron. We got up to 199 views here on the show tonight. By the way, shout out uh, Scotty Scheffler. Masters, the masters back to back vin vin uh vin uh was it lundquist retired uh yeah. no it was uh no, that's the hockey player what's the one i'm thinking of uh no Vern lundquist but Vern also lundquist. Jim Nance. um so i and eagle which we you and i are and everybody watching this show i excuse me guarantee you are familiar with i and eagle because he's like the b plus team on cbs so it's yeah. not tony romo and jim nance but ian eagle and i can't remember who his color commentator are but he's i recognize him unfortunately just like being dead honest i recognize him because he kind of has like a lazy eye and he wears the glasses it's similar like if you remember Stuart scott after yeah. he started having those procedures that's a similar situation with ian eagle he's got a great voice i as a guy who studied broadcasting and now I, I'm going to put this out here on this show because as I'm reading through the book, I'm going to give it another shout out, but I'm reading choose your enemies wisely by Patrick bed, David trying to do like business planning and like coming up with an idea, pushing the podcast, pushing the network forward. Um, I, I want to, you know, take these, I'm, I'm thinking about taking acting classes. I'm thinking about taking voice acting lessons, like figuring out ways to hold an audience because guys like Ian Eagle, Guys like Mike Breen, um, guys like Kevin Harlan, Dave Logan, all of these guys can hold you with just the sound of their voice. So what are they doing that I could possibly take and add to my repertoire? Is it something that I am able to do or do I need to find a different way to go about things? And, and I think Ian Eagle with the Masters today, Scotty Sheffield are going back to back. Uh, shout out, by the way, Scotty Sheffield's wife, not going into labor, making him, allowing him to play the entire tournament. How jealous would that be? Like, how much of a bad wife move is that if you go into labor? Like, going in, you he won it. Be with, there. You better he be won there. the Masters in five strokes. So I, I guess he could have. I don't care if you're at hole fifteen. You get your butt over there right now, <laughs> babe. Babe, listen. You get your butt back, over there back right to back. Now. I get to choose the dinner at the start of the tournament next year if I win, and I want, I want chicken wings. <laughs> This is your child we're talking about. The hold guilt. it in. Just hold the kid in. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, you're right. He did yeah, play there. I was watching the end of that with it uh, because of uh, Lundquist uh, on the 16th hole there. As they're going to wrap it up there on Masters. Jimmy, this is a rare episode where we got to touch on more than, uh, I guess, just than football tonight. But it was fun. Josh kind of joined us for WrestleMania. We had this. Jordan, obviously, hope you're doing well out there in the uh, uh, out there in Ohio. Uh, Prayers up to you, my friend. So we'll get you on here one of these episodes. Uh, as you know, you're always uh, part of the show here with it. So can't wait to get you back on with it. So, Jimmy, good show again here, man. Yeah, no, that was good. Uh, what, what you guys come, got coming up? I did, so go ahead and give everybody your schedule for the week so they know that you're the hard, yeah. hardest working man on Variety Sports Network. Well, I, a, I appreciate that, my my friend. But I, you're part of it with me in this journey. Started with you on Talking to the Great Iron kind of – us kind of doing this for like two this is our third year so it's kind of part of how i kind of look at it is uh we got baseball coming up wednesday we're going to do obviously basketball's coming up with variety sports with doug on double double do, I, we'll see how the playoffs look your nuggets are obviously going to be highly Who's involved seed? yep highly involved in the playoffs so we'll probably do a lot of pussy because oklahoma city shocked the world they can believe it. i'm hoping to get nico out a few times during the play playoffs as well oh, maybe with that yeah, so. literally just text him say hey you want to talk basketball and yeah. he will he'll just facetime you be like oh what do you want to talk about so i hope i can get him on with that so it'll be great me and tyler did a good fat boy fade away this way talked about he said his worst night in san francisco so that was part of our opening there with it this week so you can uh that so it was a good show but how about you guys at far end what do you guys got going on 
Uh, we well, we had. Uh, I want everybody to make sure they go and check out. We had Warren Garrett, the sound of our intro song. I saw that with an interview, and he just released a new song. So I'm going to give him his flowers. Hardtail Heart on Spotify, 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 Apple Music, YouTube. Hardtail Heart. It's a really good song. Um, and, and it's a little bit more country like that. But he had an awesome story talking about moving when he was 18 to Nashville. And basically, like, making sure he had no parachute, so he moved in with, like, three other guys. Neither of the two other guys or three other guys are there making music anymore, but he's happened to stay, and he's got a lot of music coming out. So Warren Garrett, at Warren Garrett Music, um, Hardtail Heart, check it out, stream it wherever you listen to your songs. Uh, but we had that interview, and then we've been putting out a lot of content. Just You guys have been. Obviously, with Mark Madness. That one was good. I watched that one. That was good. I, I really enjoyed the, like the bonus content that we've been able to do. I enjoyed having you and Jordan on for the March Madness episode. But honestly, I, I, I know that it's my biased opinion. But again, I'm reading that business planning book for a reason. I feel like Far End of the Bench has plateaued or like been at it like a stalemate for a little bit. So I'm trying to figure out how to push it over the top. But well, go back. Why do you say that? Because at VSN here, that's part of what we, you know, when I, I mean, let's just be real. We, whatever. We're talking at this point. So, like, we talked about via, uh, me, Jordan, and Josh. We met a couple weeks and I was like, hey, we just need to, like, we need to figure that we need to kind of, like, I thought we have to kind of make it smaller. We have to kind of, like, make, push the shows that we have, like, our talk on the ground or other ones like that. And, like, even stuff like your far end and my fat boy fadeaway, who are part of the network, right? Like, me, I feel like that's like those guys reached out to us. And I joined because you guys joined and all that stuff. Kind of feel like, and I talked to him. I was like, I don't think Jimmy and I are going to be offended if our stuff isn't on Variety Sports Network. We're still going to do talking the gridiron because we believe in the network and we're we want to make a good show. Like that's part of the big that's part of the selling point. And we can still use our stuff as to simulcast and do that stuff off with it. But I, I, I thought that was a good move by VSN. I thought that kind of made it a little clearer. And I think. We've built up a niche audience, and I'm ex- excited for this next third season a little bit too. As we move into the regular season too, yeah, it's um, when the network was there because of like the the business purpose of that word. I feel like because yeah. the network, we I Josh and I talked about it. I have not seen Josh in a while because we haven't been having like meetings or I haven't. He's on baseball shows. There's a St. Louis based shows and I hate St. Louis based sports. And I don't really talk about baseball because the Rockies suck. So we haven't seen each other, but like variety sports network has brought together the group of guys that we have. And now we know who works well with whom. So like you, Jordan and I do talking the gridiron. It works pretty well. And we can bring on guests from throughout the network. And then Brandon and Brandon and I apologies for the other guys on the five hole show that do hockey, but they do hockey. You guys know basketball on Double Double with Doug. Like now that we have kind of an idea, it makes sense for Variety Sports to be just these specific shows. Yeah, and yeah. All, all of our shows, <clears throat> it, it, it makes sense because like we we wanted to have the affiliation and, it, and obviously we're still going to keep the logo and the affiliation in, in the far end of the bench stuff. Um, and we still simulcast and everything like that. But yeah, we're at a point now where Far end of the bench and variety sports are, we need to move both forward. And the best way to do that is to kind of like split just barely. It's like when your mom and dad start sleeping in separate rooms, <laughs> it's because dad snores and mom needs her sleep. And then they love each other all throughout the rest of the day, but they just can't sleep next to each other anymore. No, because it's I think 30 I, years and I don't want to talk about it. No, you said that. Well, and, and the support's always there. It's like saying like, it's like, we're always going to be it's like, that's why I think talking the gridiron now we're moving on. Oh, like if, if they decide to take this off, then you and I are coming up with another name and yeah. we'll do, we'll still have a show. And and that's why I think this has been special for me. It's like, and the same way that I feel like we've built something. It, I, maybe you can say what it is. We got 215 people that at least tuned in at some point tonight. And, th- and like, we haven't had that core at the beginning when we had like 12 so it's been a lot. It's been a good journey here through the through the years, Jimmy. And we kind of make our way through AFC East. You'll kind of surprise me here in a couple of weeks with who we have. Then I look forward to kind of our conference. It sounds like maybe AFC South. We'll see who we go there. If we go Josh AFC South, to? let me know. I got some other guys out in Tennessee that maybe would want to join. So let me know if you want to go AFC South. Oh, we, I feel we to help get us a out Titans there. perspective. That might be interesting. Um, yeah, I feel like we'll do all AFC and then we'll get into NFC. We have plenty of time. No, um, no. <laughs> and be on the lookout. So the draft, 
is the 25th, so it's not this upcoming week, we'll but the following. There, maybe, right? I maybe think so. that we need to. I think that we we got to commit to doing – because since we can do the live stuff, I, and I have a television that happens to be right, right next to my desk where I podcast from, maybe – because I happen to remember, not that we need to copy everything, but I happen to remember a little show called uh, uh, Pardon My Take that did basically – like a stream yard while they were watching. So I, we're not going to show you the draft picks. You're going to have to be watching that. It's very similar to like a fight companion, but we'll be watching the draft. I think that we should do that at least for the first round. I don't think that we need to do it past no, the first that's round. That's a great idea. And we can show the draft picks in delay. Like we do that. And we can that. bring in different people throughout. So like you, Jordan and I are like the core that are there. And then we bring in Nico for no, like the like uh, initial segment. But, and, and now that we put this out here to the public, Everybody else needs to tweet at Variety Sports underscore and at Brandon uh, underscore Saffel, um, at Coach Saffel or whatever. And just let everybody know that we need to do this for Talking the Gridiron. Live show, day of the draft. I, I like it. I like don't it. Don't tell anybody, but I might even play hooky from wrestling practice if we decide <laughs> to do this. So we need to get this on the books. I like it. Let's do it. That, and that puts us at maybe two weeks, which gives us a little breather next week. And maybe it gets a chance here for that Thursday night special first round i would love that that would be awesome jimmy for us to do that uh my friend that's a good show as always jordan again we're hoping you're doing well out there talking the gridiron variety sports network jimmy far into the bench one of the best in the business uh, i'm glad that you're always doing it with me my friend darren from fat boy fade away be sure to check out our show sundays we'll see you guys hopefully on draft night jimmy draft night draft night we'll see you then peace